I'm Serena, um, and I'm a Reformed Jew. So I don't believe in an afterlife. I recently attended my first Jewish funeral, which kind of forced me to think about all that stuff for real. So at my grandmother's funeral, the very first thing we did was we said a little prayer, and we all got these black cloth pin things. And after we said the prayer, we ripped it in half. And that sound of the ripping cloth was supposed to symbolize the separation between the living and the dead. And it's just like, right off the bat, it's just like, that's it, period. It's over, it's really happening. Once they lowered her casket into the, into the grave, me and my family all took shovels and started just putting dirt onto her casket. And that like thumping sound is supposed to remind us like, again, like this is really it. This is final, that like clanging, it's a really loud sound. I believe that we have souls in our bodies. And then after we die, after, after we're buried, our souls go back into the universe. So some people would say, oh, my loved one who died, she, she's with God now. And I kind of believe a version of that because I believe that God is just everywhere and everything and just the, that tree and that fire hydrant and everything. So I believe that when we die, our souls become part of that greater universe energy connection kind of thing. I think it's easier for me to just say, no, there's no afterlife. And then if there is, I'll be pleasantly surprised. So it kind of gives me a type of motivation, kind of live life to the fullest and to do what makes me happy. And I feel like doing the right thing comes from me and not from even really like the rules in the Talmud or anything. It's, it's like I take what I think is right and for me doing the right thing and being moral is important because it just is. So that's probably my answer. <laughs> Hello, I'm Duke and uh, I am an atheist. So I, I don't really think there's an afterlife. I think that it's pretty cut and dry. Like when you're out, you're out like a, you're out like a light. Um, you know, I think that uh, th this, this life is the only one, uh, only one we got. I mean, like my family, we grew up like non-denominational Christian for a while. Like I honestly don't even remember like the last time we went to church just because it was so long ago. Like I had to be like, you know, maybe like eight or nine last time I went. But like, you know, I was never like even as a kid, like super into it. Like especially because I feel like with like as a kid, they don't really like teach you the deep, deep stuff. They're just like, hey, like, don't be a dick. Jesus loves everybody. And I'm like, OK, yeah, I can get down with that. But like. I don't know, I feel like as I got older, like, stuff just kind of made less and less sense. Yeah, eventually I'm just like, yeah, I think science has this kind of figured out, you know, like not to disrespect anybody's beliefs, but yeah, I'm just, I just kind of don't buy any kind of like afterlife or God, really. I think that like there was a point kind of between like Christianity and what I believe now where I was like, oh, well, you know, maybe it's like, I was kind of more like spiritual where I'm like, oh, maybe it's all like energy or maybe there's ghosts or something like that. I think because I was just kind of like scared of, you know, like, because I feel like, especially when you're first kind of coming to terms with it, it's very daunting to be like, wow, like, you know, when we're dead, like, that's it. But I don't know, I feel like as I got older, like, I don't know, maybe as I got, I don't know, more cynical, I've just kind of come to the conclusion where it's like, yeah, you know, it's just kind of what it is and like nothing else really makes sense or like really connects with me. I don't know, I mean, it sounds kind of cliche, but I feel like it kind of makes you like think of every day as like a gift where it's like, you know, we're like not supposed to be here. Like each one of us got here because like one specific sperm met one specific egg at like one specific time. And like, you know, life on Earth happened because like, you know, one specific meteorite carrying like microscopic organisms hit, you know, this planet with the right conditions and, you know, then dinosaurs, monkeys, and then, you know, here we are. So I think that, you know, we're, we're all just here kind of by like coincidence or like cosmic mistake. So, you know, try to smell the roses if you can. That's the way I try to think about it. Um, my name is Lamy Tuifua and um, I am a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. A lot of people call us Mormons. I was born into the religion. My mom was very, uh, uh, very into it. And when it got to like middle school times, you know, when you're in your rebellious phases, I kind of just like 
stepped away from it all, kind of went inactive, and just decided to focus on a lot of the worldly things in my life, like football and school. It wasn't until I got to college that I truly understood the teachings and just how loving a lot of our religion can be. What we believe is that there's um, three separate stages that you can go to. Uh, there's one stage called the celestial kingdom, and that's the highest that you can be. And then, oh my gosh, I don't even know the last two. I don't know which one is which because it's, oh, it's terrestrial and then celestial or telestial, right? It's the other way? Yeah. Yeah, Celestial's at the bottom. I'm sorry guys, I should know more about my own religion. But when you're a celestial being, you will have the opportunity to be a god on your own planet. I just thought I could do it on my own. I could live life on my own. But it turns out that that's not the case. I was playing football. I played football for BYU on scholarship. And it wasn't until I got a I got hurt there. I uh, herniated a disc in my neck and it was probably one of the hardest times in my life. I, uh, I didn't know what to do, where to go, what to do because football was my main focus in life and I just prayed. <laughs> I prayed and I asked for guidance and what to be doing with my life and, and it eventually brought me back. and. It's just, it just comes down to who you are as a person. I know that I might not be in the celestial kingdom because of some of our commandments and whatnot, but I just truly believe in being here for people when they need you and being a good person. That's ultimately what life's about. Uh, my name's Sammy Brown, and I identify as an attempted decent human being. Yoga, I, I have, I have, I have been, I have given my life to yoga. Literally, I got sober and the life that was given to me by grace, a life that I did not deserve, I devoted to sobriety and I devoted to yoga. And, and devoting myself entirely to those two things, I practice yoga because it's a discipline. I get on the mat every day even though most of the time I do not want to. I don't want to do life every day. I don't want to do school every day. I don't want to go to work every day. But getting on the mat every day and, and facing challenging poses that I struggle with has taught me uh, to, to face challenging moments out there in the world as they're presented to me. You know, life is not easy and it's very easy to run away and to hide and to minimize. I, I have not had any direct experience that would incline me to believe that there is an afterlife. So I definitely believe in a symbolic idea of an afterlife. So within, with, with regards to religious beliefs, there's an afterlife and you are deemed worthy of the afterlife typically by how you behave in this life. And so I have a life that is yet to come that is beyond the present moment. And if I act skillfully in the present moment, then the, then the afterlife, the life to come, will, will probably be advantageous, right? If, if I could look at my experience with being a drug addict and say that this is in some sense an, an afterlife to the life that, that I lived as a junkie, I guess I, don't, I already don't deserve the life I have now, and, and I would be content with this being as good as it gets. I don't, I don't think that it would be wise for me to strive in this lifetime banking on what may or may not happen after I die, but I can strive to act uh, in the present moment to best serve the afterlife that will be five minutes from now, five years from now, 25 years from now. It definitely makes me cherish the moments that I had with those that, 
that, uh, that I've lost. And being a junkie, I've lost most people in my life. Most of my childhood friends have passed away. People I've gotten sober with have passed away. If I believe that someone is going to be taken care of and better off in the next life than in this life, I could see that being a trap that I won't love them as much in this life, that I won't cherish, cherish them as much in this life, or that I won't miss them as, as much in this life because I'll be able to see them in the next life and I'll be there with them forever. I have no idea if they're in an afterlife or not. I doubt that they're in an afterlife or not. Uh, yeah, as, as shameful as that may be in someone's opinion for me to, to phrase it that way, but, but it definitely makes me cherish the memories that I have of them even more. And if you can grapple with that and ever come to an answer uh, that is not constantly evolving and changing, I shouldn't shit on anybody, I don't know, but for me, I hope that my answer continues to evolve and change.